All right, so what is up guys? Welcome to the second part of the Firebase login and registration tutorial. And in this part, we're gonna cover the code that will allow us to check for the users and see if they are logged in. And if they're not logged in, it will bring us to our login page where they can sign up and log into the app in case they already have some login credentials. But let's get started immediately by creating a few variables. And the first one's gonna be a private late in adva, which is going to be called auth, which will stand for Firebase authentication. And then right under there, we're gonna type in private var first time user, which is going to be a Boolean. And we're gonna set that to true initially. And then right below that, we're gonna create a private var called file Yuri. And this will be used to hold a reference to the Yuri that we select in our image picker. So let's go and type in that it is of type Yuri, which is nullable and set it initially to null. And we need to import Yuri. And right below on onCreate, we're gonna go ahead and instantiate our authentication. So it's gonna be auth equals Firebase authentication dot get instance. And then right below that, we're gonna go ahead and create a function which is going to handle our button clicks. And right below, the first thing we're gonna do is create this button clicks function, private function button clicks. And inside here, we're gonna get a reference to all our buttons on the login screen. So the first one we want to get is the button underscore login, and we're gonna type in set on click listener. And if we click on the button login, we're gonna set first time user to false because obviously this is not a first time user. And then we're gonna go and type in create or login user, which is a function that we have not created yet, but we will very shortly. Then we're also gonna do the same thing for button register. So we can just type in button underscore register dot set on click listener. And inside here, we're gonna set the first time user attribute to be true. And then we're gonna take this create or login user. And we're gonna use the exact same one that we called inside the button underscore login set on click listener. And then finally, right below that, we need to add a set on click listener for our profile image. And as you can see here, we have two different circular profile image views. One comes from the activity underscore main XML and one is from the activity underscore user. It is very important that you pick the activity underscore main because that is the current view we are referencing. And we are gonna set an on click listener for that. Then inside here, we're gonna create a function called select image and we will create that later on in the tutorial. Now the first function we want to take care of is the create or login user function. So down here we can type in private function create or login user. And I noticed I made a typo here, so let's just fix that typo. And now everything corresponds correctly. And let's make some space down here, like Philip would always say. And inside here, we'll start by retrieving two values, which is gonna be the email and the password, and using those to create the user. So let's go ahead and type in value email, and that's going to equal edit text underscore email dot login dot text to string. And we need to do the same thing for the password. So value password, it's going to equal et underscore password login dot text to string. Next, we need to check whether they were empty or not, because if they were empty, we can't create a user, of course. So it's important that these are not empty. And to do this, we will create a check with an if statement. So it'll be if email is not empty and the password is not empty, then we can go ahead and start creating our user. So the first thing we want to do inside here is launch a coroutine. So we'll just type in globalscope.launch and we want to add a dispatcher. So we're gonna type in dispatches.io because this is a in-out operation. So it's important we select IO. And inside here, we're gonna create a try and catch block just in case anything goes wrong. And we can just get started with writing the catch block first. So we get rid of the error message and it's just going to be an exception. And inside here, we have to change the context to the main dispatcher because we want to go ahead and create a toast message. So inside here, we can just use this toast and we need to insert some context, which will be this at our main activity. And inside here, we can write our message, which is just going to be essentially the error message. So you can just insert the letter E in here. And just in case it's not a string, just type in to string and that will take care of the error message. And this is just handy to have because every time you do something wrong, it actually gives you the reason why it failed and it will give you the reason that came from Firebase. So if the user doesn't use enough letters or numbers in their password, it will tell you error, the user has not used enough letters or whatever. It, Firebase will give you a very nice description of why it could not make it work. 
So definitely include this toast message because it saves you a lot of time in debugging. Now down here, we're gonna add another check, which is going to check whether it is the user's first time on this app. And to do that, all we have to type in is if first time user, then we will execute this block. So the first thing we want to call is our authentication and we are going to create user with email and password. And that's gonna take the email that we got from our edit text and the password from that as well, await. Then we can type in auth.currentUser, which is the user we just created. Then we're gonna just add .let, which will just allow us to execute some more code inside here. And the first thing we have to create in here is an update, and that's going to equal a user profile change request dot builder. And all we want to do inside here is set the photo URI, which is going to be the file URI from the selector. And let's pretend the user decides to not pick an image. That's totally fine. The app will continue running. And when they go to their user profile, there just won't be an image. They can always update it later. Also dot build. And then to actually set the image, we can type in update profile and we can insert our update request. Then we just want to make sure that this whole block of code actually gets executed before we move on with some more code. So we're just gonna include a wait as well. And of course we need to add this question mark here and that will take care of that. And in case it's not the user's first time, we're just gonna log them in. So we can just type in else authentication dot sign in with email and password. And we can insert our email and our password and call dot await. And while we're still inside this code routine, we have to switch the context once more and we're gonna do with context dispatches.main because we want to create another toast. And here we will go and type in toast with the context, which is this at main activity. And we will type in you are now logged in. And right below that, we want to take the user to the user activity. So we'll type in value i, and that's going to equal an intent, which will take the context of this at main activity and it will help us with starting our user activity class.java. And don't forget to import intent. Now we can go ahead and call start activity and insert our intent. And finally, we want to call finish. So we cannot go back to this login activity when the user is logged in, because that would be a very weird user experience. Anyway, so after that, we can go ahead and create a function that actually checks whether the user is logged in or not. And this one's gonna be called private function check if user is logged in. And if auth.currentUser is not equal to null, then we can execute this code, which will just take the user to the user page. So in our case, we're just gonna go ahead and copy the intent that we created earlier and paste it in here. And that will take care of checking whether the user is logged in or not. But next we need to go and override on start because every time we start the application, on start gets called and that will help us with checking whether the user is logged in or not. So we're just going to add the method we just created inside here and that will take care of calling it every single time the user starts the application again and that should just make sure to send the user to the correct page. And the final thing to do inside here is to create the code that helps the user select the image. So down here we're going to go ahead and create that private function which is going to be called select image. And to do this, all we have to do is create an image picker with the dependency that I have imported. And we just need to refer to an activity, which will be with this. And then right below, we want to make sure that the user can crop the image. And this is optional, but we want the image to be compressed to about a megabyte. And we want the max result size to be 1080 by 1080. But of course, these two are absolutely optional. I'm just going to include it because the documentation for the image picker included it. And I thought it would be nice if you could actually use these in a real project. It could save you some space in case you want to save the user image. And then you want to call dot start. And that will take care of creating the image picker and allowing the user to pick an image. But we also have to call on activity results so we can actually receive the image and insert it inside the image view. So to do this, we need to override on activity result, this one right here. And on top on calling the super dot on activity result, we need to go right below and create a when statement. So it's gonna be when the result code is equal to activity dot result okay. Then we're gonna create this block that will allow us to create a file URI that we can insert into our image view. So first we're going to assign the value to our file URI, which is going to equal the data that we got from the image picker, which is the image of course. Then we want to go ahead and insert that URI into the circular image view that we created for our main activity. And to do this, all we have to do is call 
IV underscore profile image, the one with activity underscore main dot XML, of course, and set image URI and insert the file URI. And in case the result code results in the image picker having a result with the error code of error, then we're going to make a toast, which will just say there was an error in picking the image. So let's just get the toast, add this as the context. And inside here, we will type in image picker dot get error and get the error from the data. And in case it's none of these two, we can add the else block, which is just going to be a simple toast message that takes the context of this and it will say task cancelled. And this block will be executed essentially if the user decides they don't want to pick a user image and they back out of the image picker, it will say the task has been cancelled because the user didn't really do anything and it wasn't an error. Well, that being said, that's all we have to do in our main activity. And now we can move on to our user activity. So let's just go ahead and click on user activity. And inside here, we need to get started by creating two variables. The first one's going to be the same one as earlier. So private late in adva authentication of Firebase authentication. Then we need to create a private variable called file URI, just as we did earlier. And that's gonna be of type URI, which we need to import. And we're going to give it the value of null initially. Then as always, we need to get this instance of Firebase. So we're gonna get the Firebase dot get instance. And right below, we're gonna create two functions. The first one's gonna be called set user info. And the one right below that is gonna be called button clicks. And the first one that we want to take care of is the button clicks method. So we're going to type in private function button clicks. And the first thing we want to refer to inside here is the tv underscore profile dot sign out and set an on click listener to that. And this will just have the responsibility of signing out the user. So we'll create a function here called sign out user. Then we want to get a button that refers to our profile save info. So we can save the info on our profile and set an on click listener for that. And then we can call this method save user info, which we will take care of later as well. And finally, we need to go ahead and set an on-click listener for the second circular profile image. And you can see here, this one is the image view that belongs to activity underscore user dot XML and setting an on-click listener for that. And inside here, we're going to create the exact same image selector, which is going to be called select image. And as you may have guessed it, we can actually just go to our main activity and copy the last two functions, the one that says select image and the one that says on activity result, because we're going to be using the exact same function for this. So let's just paste that below the button clicks. We don't have this error anymore for selected image. And now we only have to take care of sign out user and save user info. So let's start with the fast one, which is signing out the user. So we'll just type in private function sign out user. And inside here, the first thing we want to do is sign out the user, which will take the authentication. And all you have to do is call sign out and that will take care of everything that is required to sign out the user. Then we need to create an intent so we can send the user back to the login screen. So it'll be value intent. It's going to take the context of this and we want to send our user back to our main activity, which is the login screen. And we will start the activity immediately under. Then we want to create a toast that tells the user they have successfully been signed out. Successfully signed out with an exclamation mark. And with that being done, we just have to create the code for set user info and for save user info. So let's create set user info first. So we're going to do private function set user info. And inside here, we're going to get our profile username and we're going to set the text to the authentication, which is our current user. And that is nullable, of course, in case the user is no one. And we're going to set the email that we have assigned to this user. Then we're going to do the same thing for the username, which will be et underscore profile username dot set text. And that's going to take the authentication or the current user that has been authenticated dot display name. And initially this is going to be null because when you log in, you only gave the user the option to pick an email and a password. So you'll see there won't be any text displayed, but as soon as you update it, it will call this method again and the user will be able to see their username as they log into the profile screen. And then we need to get a reference again to our profile image from our activity user, of course, and we need to set the image URI, which will be the authentication dot current user, which is nullable, and it will get the photo URL that we have provided. And finally, we want to keep the file URI up to date. So we'll type in file URI is going to equal the authentication dot current user, which is nullable and photo URL. And right below that, let's go ahead and create the 
save user info function. And inside here, we're gonna get our current user and check if it's null. And if it's not null, we will we will execute all of the code inside this block. So the first thing we want to do is create a value of username, and that's going to equal our profile username dot text to string. Then we're gonna go ahead and create a value of user profile picture, and that's gonna be our file URI the one that's most up to date. And finally, we need to update the email. So we will type in value user email is going to equal et underscore profile email dot text to string. So these will just take the values from our edit text and this one will just keep the user profile picture up to date. Then we need to go ahead and create another update. So we're gonna type in value updates and that's going to equal a user profile change request dot builder. And the first thing we want to do is set the display name to the username above. Then we want to set the photo URI to the user profile picture and then call dot build. Then we can go ahead and create a coroutine, which is gonna be global scope dot launch. And we need to change this to dispatches dot IO. And inside this block, the first thing we have to do is create a try and catch block. So we're gonna do try catch E with the exception. And just as I did earlier, we're gonna type in with context because we want to create a toast in here, dispatches.main. And right below, we will create a toast, which will take this at user activity as the context. And as a message, we're just gonna type in the error dot message. And I messed up because the main activity, I just wrote to string, but I believe it's a lot more efficient if we just type dot message. So if you go back to your main activity, you can just change that to dot message. And finally, inside the try and catch block, we can call dot it, which will refer to this authenticated user up here. And we can call update profile with it, which will take the update as the profile update. And we can call dot await on it, which will make sure it gets executed before we move on. Then we have to do the same thing for the update email. So we're just gonna type in it dot update email, and we're going to insert the new or the previous user email. So that will always keep the email up to date. And finally, we want to switch the context of this coroutine to the dispatches.main because we want to update all of the UI, which means we will just call set user info. And we will create a toast that says the user has successfully updated his profile. So let's just type in profile successfully updated and add an exclamation mark. And that was actually the final line of code we had to write to make this program function. So let's go ahead and run the program and test it out. Perfect. So let's go ahead and test it. Let's click on this profile image view and click on gallery. And as you can see, the first time it's going to ask you whether you want to give it access to your photos. And we'll just say yes, otherwise we can't pick any photos. And this is a lovely picture of me from today. So we'll click on that. And as you can see, your profile image will be inserted there. Then let's go ahead and sign up and create a new user, which will be federico at email.com. And the password will be apple99. And we will tap on sign up. And as you can see, we're actually missing the email here. And that is because if we go back to our user activity, I have accidentally called username twice. So what we want to do is change the one that says email to et underscore profile email. And that should solve all of our problems. So let's go ahead and rerun the program. So this time when the app opens, you can see that my email is actually inserted. So that was just a typo on my part. Everything still works perfectly. And now let's test if we want to add a username. We'll say Federico2020, although I prefer without spaces. And let's also change this profile image to something a little bit nicer, such as me in a gas mask. And uh, let's save the info. Okay, so unfortunately, I actually forgot my password immediately. And of course, I can go back in the video footage to find it, but that's a lot of effort. So what I did is go ahead and create a new user. So we're gonna try this again. And hopefully I can remember the password for this one, which is 123123. So let's go ahead and log out and then let's type in second try at apple.com and the password was 123123. Then let's click on login. And as you can see, as soon as we log in, we will have our user there, which means everything worked perfectly and we have successfully created users for our Firebase application. Also, one more thing before I finish this video is if you go to your Firebase console, you'll see under the authentication tab, that now you will have a few users. And in case you want to delete a user, you can go ahead and just either disable, delete, 
or reset the password. And that's actually all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you.